Okay, good evening, everyone. The board wants to welcome all of you to tonight's Board of Ed meeting being held in the town council chambers. The date is Tuesday, October 25th, 2016. I want to remind you that this meeting is being recorded and please turn off all cell phones. Ellie, will you please do the roll call? Good evening, everyone. Mr. Cassio? Mrs. Fitzpatrick? Present. Mr. Forrest? Here. Mr. Hill? Here. Ms. Moon? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Present. Mrs. Vassell? Present. Vice Chairperson Mr. Morris? Chairperson Mrs. Granado? Present. And Weathersfield High School Student Representative Mr. Jack Bratton? Present. All present. Okay. I would like Adina and Les Cruz to come up in the front and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Good. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Adina and Les. So good to see you. Mr. Emmett, are there any staff or student recognition this evening? I have nothing this evening, Mrs. Granato, but I will tell you that the uh, next two board meetings, regularly scheduled board meetings, are booked. Okay. Um, on tonight's agenda, next on tonight's agenda, is the approval of the minutes of the previous regular Board of Ed meeting on October 11, 2016. So move for approval. Second. Are there any corrections? Oh, sorry. Any corrections? No. So move for approval. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? The minutes are approved. Also on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes of a special Board of Ed meeting on October 12, 2016, and I move to postpone this matter indefinitely. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Those minutes are tabled or postponed indefinitely. Is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Please come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that you have a limit of five minutes. Come on up. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair. Uh, Matt D'Angelo of 16 Denison Ridge. Um, I am calling, I'm here today because I have been following the uh, issue in the paper about the audit. I think it went to Markham Associates. I remember uh, reading an article in the Hartford Current back in February, and the tenor of the article was that two former public school officials were basically overpaid. Uh, there were a couple of things about that that, you know, I thought seemed a little bit strange from having uh, sat where you folks sat so many years ago, one of which was generally personnel issues. You try to keep them out of the press. You try to handle them discreetly. And one of the individuals said in that article, well, nobody's contacted me about an, an overpayment, implying that if somebody had come to him and said, hey, you were overpaid, if he agreed with you, he'd have paid it back. The other individual was quoted in the article as, as or it was said in the article, the other individual had been overpaid in the past and that when he was approached by the board, uh, he did pay it back, and which raised the question of, well, why don't you go to him again if there was another overpayment? There was a back and forth between him through the article, between him and the current business manager where he says, no, I wasn't overpaid, I was entitled to that money, and, I have, and the, the board has the paperwork to prove it. And the business manager is quoted as responding, saying, no, we don't have any kind of paperwork like that. I sent the superintendent an email, because I said, you know, this doesn't make sense to me. Why, uh, why are they talking about this in the press? If there was an overpayment, as has been reported, why hasn't anybody gone to them? The superintendent responded, can't talk about it, it's a personnel matter. And I understood that. It was the rule that, I, that we tried to live by when I served. And it made sense to me. But the response I had to the superintendent, and 
I, I never really got an answer to that is then why was the business manager quoted in the press as talking about him? It was somewhat troubling to me. And again, if you weren't, the reason that you don't go to somebody about an overpayment is that you have reason to believe that it may be more than just an overpayment, that maybe there was, it wasn't just an innocent mistake. And again, one who, it, reading, from reading the article, it was hard not to come away with an impression that that was going on. The chair ended up saying, let's do an investigation. Okay, makes sense. Let's have what I was told was a forensic audit, a comprehensive audit, and as I understood it, the audit was supposed to look at all the payroll records during a five-year period, including during the previous uh, personnel director's tenure. And what was announced in the uh, from the board recently was the results of the audit was that there were no irregularities, discrepancies. I think those were the words that were used. And I took that to mean, well, if you looked at all the payroll records and there were no discrepancies, uh, to me, a, an overpayment of several thousand dollars is probably within the subset of discrepancies. I interpreted that to mean there were no overpayments. Case closed, we looked over everything, we can move forward. And then I read in the paper that they didn't deal with the overpayments in question. And again, it, it was confusing to me, and I know that you were following up on it, Madam Chair, maybe you'll clarify it tonight, or maybe at a later meeting, but it, again, it's not making sense based on what I'm hearing from the dais and what I've been reading about in the paper. And I realize I can't be privy to everything that you know, I understand that, I get that, I've been where you are. Um, it's a little troubling to me that if it's a confident, if it is a sensitive personnel matter, that frankly the business manager was talking about it in the press. Doesn't seem to me like that's something that should be happening. But again, I'm hopeful that once you've gone through everything, you can clarify, and then again, explain what, why weren't these two individuals part of what Markham was looking at. And I thought they, it, the idea was let's look at all the payroll records, clear up every, anything that doesn't add up right so we can all move forward. I'm looking forward to your answer. I thank you and enjoy the rest of the year. Thank you. Is there any other comments this evening? Okay. Mr. Emmett, do you have any communications to share? I do. Thank you, Mrs. Granado. Good evening, everyone. Uh, a few items this evening. Uh, this week marks uh, parent-teacher conference time. Uh, we have minimum day schedules uh, throughout the rest of this week. Uh, they'll be used to facilitate uh, conference schedules and allow for staff development opportunities as well. A uh, reminder to uh, everyone in the public that the Board of Education canceled the regularly scheduled meeting uh, that was originally scheduled for November 8th. Uh, it is Election Day. Uh, also of note, the town council meeting scheduled for November 7th has also been canceled as well. Uh, there will be no school for students on election day. However, staff members will be present for professional development. Uh, the district will also be closed on Friday, November 11th in uh, observance of Veterans Day. Uh, the big news, if you haven't heard it already, is that the Wethersfield High School pool has reopened. Uh, it actually opened a week ahead of schedule, uh, and I'm very proud to report that the uh, Weathersfield uh, girls swim and dive team had their first home home uh, meet of the season on Friday. Uh, they will also be back in the pool for senior night next Friday as well. Um, I have to say um, a huge thank you to the building committee, uh, members of the Board of Education, certainly the administration at the high school, uh, our friends from ONG Industries, uh, there was a tremendous amount of coordination and uh, we got the pool back for us to be able to fill and clean and uh, Fred and his crew did an absolutely phenomenal job taking a space that was completely <laughs> dirty and, and dusty and full of, of de debris, cleaning it out and getting that pool sparkling clean. So we got the approval from uh, the Department of Public Health last Thursday. We did the emergency light testing on Friday. Anthony Dignati gave it the okay. So we are open and ready to go. A uh, couple of items with regard to our freshmen who I'm sure have been waiting anxiously for the uh, pool class to start. We'll be starting the curricular programming uh, next week. 
um, as, we, as we move forward. So very happy that that uh, happened. And again, thanks to all who were involved in getting that project done. So also, just uh, so you know, looking at the calendar, again, we're under a month away from Thanksgiving and uh, with Monday being Halloween, marks essentially the end of all of the heavy construction. Uh, we're looking at our substantial completion date uh, coming up on Monday. Uh, we are in the final throes of uh, finishing off Tech Ed, the recording studio, the green room, and our last bank of classrooms. So Fred is in the process of uh, coordinating the delivery of furniture. That's happening on Thursday. Um, and we are cautiously optimistic that we will be in these new classroom spaces on uh, Monday. We'll have a uh, owner's meeting tomorrow morning at 8 at the high school, so I'll be headed to that to uh, see where the construction company is at. And again, just let me remind you that although the substantial construction is complete, there are still other items that will likely stretch out well into the spring and even into next summer as we wrap this project up. But we're, we're very happy that uh, everybody will be getting to their, their home space very, very shortly. And with it, that's communications. Great. Thank you. It's good communication. Thank you. Um, moving on to our action items. Diane, can I please have you read motion 6A? Move that the Weatherfield Board of Education approve the world geography curriculum for grade 9, levels H, 1, and 2. Second. And I think we're going to put them together today. And also move that the Weatherfield Board of Education for approve the grade six social studies curriculum. Okay, is there a second? Second. <laughs> Just right on the wall. Okay, second. Any discussion? <coughs> Diane? The um, Student Programs and Services Committee reviewed these requests last Tuesday at their meeting um, and wholeheartedly endorsed them. The World Geography curriculum is an expansion of what's currently being offered includes geography which is going to better, better prepare the um, ninth graders as they get into their 10th grade um, history and social studies programs and the grade six social studies curriculum was quite the expansion um, incorporated incorporated um, a lot of the other programs, um, the writing, those types of things, and research, and we'll also get the kids ready for seventh and eighth grade. And we were very impressed with um, both those programs and the curriculums. <clears throat> Any other comments? Well, I'd like to make comment, number one, that geography course is now in the right place. You know, it needed to be early on in the high school um, <coughs> curriculum. And also that grade six social studies, my um, accolades to the group, the group of teachers who worked on it and to Darla Minor who was in charge of it. And that is really a state of the art unit. You know, they use the Google Drive for the teachers to have all their information and the kids are using imagery and digital resources and links. And one of my favorite parts in education is when instead of testing, there's performance tasks to be done. Um, and that's what this is. So they have to take all the information they've learned and they do a task, whether it's written or reading or a presentation. Um, this is really uh, 21st century learning. And I was so pleased at the committee meeting to hear of it. It's great. Okay. Any other discussion on it? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, we'll move on to um, any reports tonight, Mr. Emmett? Are we all set on that? All set. All okay. Set. Um, meetings held. We had a special Board of Ed meeting on 10 12 16, which was on um, personnel matters. And we also had a special Board of Ed meeting on October 18th. Um, the board met with Lyle Kurtman, who is a consultant working with the administration and the board on leadership and organizational development. The board and the superintendent worked on the roles of the board, a vision and strategic planning, and the superintendent's evaluation. Um, CREC Council, I'm going to continue. I was unable to go to, um, which disappointed me because um, I love it. It gives you a look at what the region is doing through CREC. Um, but I was at another meeting. 
Um, policy and planning, Polly. I'm sorry to say that that, po uh, that committee was canceled due to a lack of quorum. Okay. Then we move on to Student Program and Services Committee, which was quite long. Diane. Yes, um, we met last week. We talked about the geography curriculum and the um, sixth grade social studies curriculum. We also discussed the um, district assessment calendar. Um, several members had asked for a calendar of all the assessments that are done throughout the, um, the various grade levels. Um, there were some concerns about how much assessment, the number of assessments we were doing and the length of the assessments. Um, and it was brought out that the number of assessments this year was reduced. Um, but I think we still want to look at what data we're collecting and how much might be um, duplicative. We also discussed the AP enrollment and AP exam scores. Um, the committee, some of the committee members were concerned about um, some of the scores as well as some of the courses, the numbers of students not taking the AP exams and so forth. So um, we requested that the high school, that we create a, a student survey and survey the students to uh, determine why they might not be taking the AP exams. Um, there's other classes, other AP type of, or UConn ECE classes that we should offer. Um, there's also an update on the Kindergarten Collaborative on Purposeful Play that was held back in October with all the kindergarten teachers. Um, a lot of the teachers were present to share their different ideas and how each of the schools was integrating the Purposeful Play model into their curriculum. And there's also discussion about the class size, specifically at SDMS, um, as to how the scheduling drives the class size. And that was it. Okay, thank you. Um, our Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborative, Matt. Sure, we had the uh, collaborative had its annual meeting, yes, last night at the Weathersfield, uh, at the Pickin Center. It was, uh, it was really a chance for all, most if not all, the stakeholders of the community that, I don't say all the people that have an interest in early child education, but a lot of the stakeholders that certainly do, whether it's the town, um, the board, the town, count, the town council, the town administration, and so on and so forth. Um, the annual meeting consisted of a very, very moving presentation about how to connect with individuals no matter their, uh, no matter their diversity of upbringing. And I, th I, I cried, and I admit it. Um, it was, it was an, it, and, but it not only was it moving, but it was also extremely informative. Um, and uh, I think that the, the thrust of this particular meeting was the recognition of Weathersfield's need and of a, a basically a family center where families that may, families of all, of all kinds can um, attach whatever needs that they might have to the resources that are available. And sometimes it is merely just making that connection and we may have the resources, whether it's public or private or both, for a lot of our families, but the fact that those families don't necessarily know how to get them um, it seems to be somewhat of a barrier. So um, there's a lot of discussion about creating sort of a, a kind of a family center that is a place where families can go and probably the town can go to uh, allocate or to, to match up the resources with the needs and make our community better because of it. Um, I would certainly foresee that not only is it people that need stuff, but it could certainly be a beacon for lots of other things, whether it's programmatic for just children, families that have kids, or maybe even volunteerism. And there's probably a lot of great ideas that can stem around some type of a central location for this town um, at a family center. And so uh, that was, I think, what a lot of the discussion was about and how other towns have done it and different types of resources that are out there. And there was a mention and I'll probably harp on this until I, it happens or I leave, um, that uh, there is a reduction in the amount of students that are attending pre-K uh, at all income levels in our town. And it just, the, the stats just show that it's going down. And um, I think that's to the detriment of, of the students in the, in the long run, not just from an academic, but social, emotional, et cetera, et cetera. So that was something that was briefly talked about, but of course, 
close to my heart. So that's Thank whack. You. Thank you, Matthew. Could I just ask you, mm -hmm. you know, I heard that comment made last night about the reduction in the number of uh, kids who were attending pre-K. Is that because there are fewer um, people who are sending their kids? Is it because um, we don't have the capacity for it? Is there, a, I just didn't quite understand the reason why that was the case. I think there, I'm not sure that the reason, I think there are a lot of um, thought of reasons. A lot of it, I think, well, I think there are many, there's a variety of reasons why that might be happening. Some of the reasons that have been discussed when we talked about that particular point is the changing, not necessarily so much the changing demographic, but the changing family makeup of the town. We've got many more, you know, two, two working families and or families are making a certain maybe uh, life choice that maybe one of the parents stay home in order to take care of the kids, in order to save money to, to continue. So I, I think it's the... Ch it's a changing family over 20 years, changing work environment, cha you know, that type of thing. But I could, or we could ask if they have some more, if they've drilled down the data more about maybe what are mm -hmm. the driving forces between that. I'm sure we, we do know the results, at yeah, least. Yeah. I just wanted to make one more comment on that. Um, I, I attended as well, and that was just a really dynamic uh, program. Yes. Uh, not only was the speaker excellent and the presentation, but also the panel that um, that they assembled of um, of parent representatives and to hear their stories and um, and to get an idea how uh, other centers work it, in other in Hartford it was it it really was very informative I I certainly appreciated it kind of brought me up to speed and we forget about how other towns and cities function we mm -hmm. hear about organizations but we're never you know so hearing that was uh, really very helpful thank you thank you just on that note I think it's important to note that when we talk about family centers this is not this is not at all a an urban concept there are many towns mm -hmm. that look right. that demographically look just like we do and even towns that don't look like us that are more rural that have family centers um, I think Bobby, you were telling me like yep. Cheshire and Southington, and I mean, you know, this is not an this is not an urban con. This is a, a community concept to just to make sort of make the community better, matching resources. Mm -hmm. And there's a difference, wasn't there? One was a uh, family resource center as opposed to a family center. I think um, so. The and the t so the types of it. It sounds like it's splitting hairs, but there are different right. services that come from. Right from either side, so uh, it was very helpful. Thank you. Thank you, thank you both. Um, school projects building committee? Yes, Mr. After, after I had to sneak out of the uh, WEC meeting a little early last night to get to the uh, building committee uh, meeting, we had a variety of topics on the agenda, uh, including uh, the discussion around roof screens versus painting of the air handler units um, that will ultimately be going back to planning and zoning that'll be one of those items that will likely be addressed um, springtime summertime uh, given the fact that our weather is now cooling uh, we talked about uh, some change orders uh, obviously contractor requisitions uh, and now we're starting to talk about punch list items and closeout so that's a nice thing to have on the uh, on the agenda so it's all set okay. thank you Move on to meetings that are scheduled. We have a policy and planning committee. We have two of them on November 2nd and November 16th at 5.30. Shared services on November 9th at 6 o'clock. Um, WEC will be meeting on November 14th at 4.30 in the library. Um, school projects building committee, November 14th at 6.30. Another student program and services committee on November 15th at 6.30. Creck Council meets um, November 16th at 11.30 a.m. And Finance and Informational Management Committee on November 22nd at 5.30. Okay. Is there any unfinished business? Holly? I, I thought um, there were a couple of details that were still outstanding from the um, Markham audit. That's what I was just, I, oh, okay. I was going to address it. Yeah, I was just wondering yep. about that. Okay, 
Thank you. Okay, well, then I'll address it. Um, <laughs> Good transition. And I'm, and I'm glad. Um, at the October 11th board meeting, our last board meeting, I discussed under unfinished business the forensic report that we received from the Markham Advisory Group. Um, we continue to work with Markham on this report. I've sat down with the advisors to seek clarification regarding the work they performed um, and their findings. All the details that we are reviewing have not yet been completed, and as soon as we have clarification, I will be reporting any changes. But this work does not change the conclusion that Markham found that in their information that identifies there is no suspicious, fraudulent, or inappropriate activity concerning the payroll records of the Board of Education. But we continue to look through it with, as they would say, a fine tooth comb. Um, so that's where we stand, and we'll be working on it um, with Markham and with the business um, department here. Okay? Any questions? It's ongoing until it's, we finally conclude everything. Okay, moving on. Um, any public comment? Um, come on up and state your name and address. Um, and we, may I remind you that you have five minutes. Okay. Are there any board comments? Janet? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just wanted to touch on a couple things. Um, it, the marching band um, is going to be competing at the New England States this Saturday, which is going to be at um, New Britain. And then they're going to the national competition in November, November 12th, um, at MetLife Stadium. And with that being said, they want to thank you very much, everyone in the community that supported them with the fruit sales. And I believe it's going to be November 19th. Um, last week, they um, had their highest scores yet, which is a 90.30 for the season, um, which is really good because they start out at like 75. So that's, that really does boost them. And um, the pool, I want to to just say I, I was there with my daughter and it was so much fun to be there. Um, I, I needed some assistance from her to tell me what was going on next, but it was great in the, the spirit that was in the school and all the kids and the excitement that they wanted to go and support everyone that was um, in the, on the swim team. Um, and I think my daughter even said the band was gonna try and get together some students to play in um, the pool, but it just didn't work out and there wouldn't be enough room or something like that. But they were really excited to support, you know, their fellow classmates at the pool. Um, one question I had a parent approach me on is the um, assembly we had last week at the high school. And if there was any form or way we can get some feedback from the students about the person that spoke. Mm -hmm. um, I'll have a conversation with Mr. Moore. That might be something that uh, would be well served doing during an advisory. Okay. Um, I actually happened uh, to attend at Silas Dean. He spoke both at the high school as well as at Silas Dean and did a community event the night that we had our retreat. And um, I was in with him when he was talking to the eighth graders. And very, very powerful message. And it was interesting. You know, you know, you have an impact. You get those eighth graders, and they can't wait to get off to lunch. Well, he finished his uh, presentation, then he waited outside the auditorium. And there had to be between six and 10 kids that gathered around him and you know, were asking him questions. So a very positive impact. And it's just one of those things that we, we really try and do to uh, support our students and um, helping them make good, good positive choices. We don't have any feedback from the high school on that presentation? Mm -hmm. Or do you know any, how the students well, I'm, at, I'm, I'm at the high school tomorrow at 8 a.m., so I'll uh, bring that up with Mr. Just Moore. Just curious, I had somebody sure. ask me about that um, mm -hmm. and how we decide who comes to speak to the students. Okay. That was another question I was asked. Okay. okay. Anyone else for comments? Polly? Uh, I just had a couple of things to uh, report. Um, the, um, the Hunger Action uh, Task Force um, met at the high school um, in, for their October 14th meeting. And um, one of the, it was absolutely great because we had so many kids um, who attended and even not knowing what the meeting was and off the cuff, they gave all kinds of great ideas and um, mm -hmm. were 
uh, basically a number of them expressed their enthusiasm about um, about continuing or getting involved with uh, with the pro with different projects and um, so it we will uh, we're working on it now but because of the kids schedule I think it were it's a little easier for them to meet at the high school um, and I just wanted to thank the staff um, who helped us out on that and also Mr. Moore because we, um, our group of 15 people or so showed up just as the, um, as all the buses and the dismissal and everything was happening and, and it was all very, um, uh, very efficiently handled. So, it, and uh, it made us all feel very comfortable. So hopefully we will be back to, um, uh, to have our meetings there. Uh, also, one of the things I attended last week was the, the community forum at uh, Webb, uh, which was a just such a well-presented, um, excellent program uh, that was um, that the subject of the of the program was uh, nutrition, and um, the, uh, there was a, ta a food tasting ahead of time so that we could all see what it is that our children are eating. And, um, and an excellent slide and uh, uh, presentation. And also, um, there were re student representatives from the elementary, uh, from the middle school, and also from the high school level. And uh, they provided some great insight. So um, it would be, um, the only disappointment was it wasn't quite as well attended as it could have been. So. Um, uh, I would like to s personally like to see more of those things because I think it, I know that personally it gave me a lot of insight into uh, our, our lunch and breakfast programs and, and uh, the, play, the availability of, uh, of assistance. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, um, I also wanted to mention that for, uh, Saturday night I was at a, at a dinner and um, the, um, it's actually a, um, a fundraiser for the, the uh, Democratic Party. But the reason why I bring it up is because, um, uh, as with a, a couple of years in the past, this year we also had a um, terrific rep uh, participation by the young Democrats who are high school students. And I just once again want to say that I was just so impressed. The um, kids were so... Uh, Poised, and um, they not only got involved with assisting with the dinner, but they also um, uh, many of them introduced our elected uh, state and um, uh, national um, delegation, and did a beautiful job. They wrote their own uh, speeches and that type of thing. So I I was very pleased to see that we have that kind of participation from our young people. Thank you. Great. You know, I often wonder, can we videotape these forums and get them up on our website? Yeah. Oh, the, the, the community forum? Mm -hmm. That would be. Yeah, I would also just like to say, it, um, and, and you may have already thought of this, was of um, sort of, of, would be of, of maybe surveying the parents or seeing if there is a re It's. I know it's very difficult to find the right time. Mm. Um, is it yep. better during the day? Is it better in the evening? And. And it's it's difficult, and and I do know you publicized it, so um, we, we you did. know that was the big thing. And I think everyone, uh, whether regardless of whether they were making taking advantage of the uh, free and reduced lunches or just had kids in the school system and were interested in uh, how the types of me uh, meals that that we are serving, and because. Uh, uh, those of us who are out talking to parents get conflicting. Oh, I can't. My, why is it that they have cookies when I can't send in this or whatever? So it clarified an awful lot. Plus, gave us the opportunity to taste what it is that mm -hmm. kids eat. Okay. Thank so. you. Anyone else for closing remarks? Matthew. Um, just a quick uh, question for the superintendent. I noticed in the last. I think it was the last. Uh, Friday update, mm -hmm. or and I think in another document that there was uh, approximately two hundred and something thirty something thousand dollar. I thought it was like a minimum education funding requirement or something like that, and there was a difference. And I sort of understood it, but I didn't know is that. And I'm, I guess my end of the road question is: Is that going to affect? Are we going to be looking forward to some more funds, or does that get cycled through in a different way? That 
You What's are, the effect on the board? You are speaking of the minimum budget requirement. Right. And uh, the process with regard to the minimum budget requirement is this. After we set our budget in June, the um, legislature uh, allocated some additional ECS, educational cost sharing monies, uh, okay. to the town. So of that, uh, the board the board's share of that is approximately two hundred and forty thousand dollars at this point in time the town has until january first to talk about a plan as to how to uh... disperse that money okay. um, so that has not yet been decided um, obviously you know from our finance and information uh... committee meetings we are running very tight and very lean this year um, so th that money would certainly be a welcome addition to our budget to, uh, to help get us through the year and you know also um, last year we were extraordinarily tight we have a, a operating budget that is a scant 0.42 percent higher than uh, last year's budget right. and you do the math with regard to your contractual increases and, and you see we're, we're, we're tight right. we're tight so so though it is fair to say that we sh should be expecting that money at some point after january that that will be our request that okay. will be my request absolutely right. so that seems like and this is probably more to poly that that's we should probably start to take a look at that or at least acknowledge that that's a chunk of change you know uh, that's, that's yeah, not that, like a three thirty five hundred dollar yeah we talked about it briefly in the um, the finance and information committee meeting this past uh, the one be where we met last month yeah um, and at this point because it's really more of a an issue the an issue for the town to to address first and then they will obviously, um, I think uh, Mr. Emmett and Mr. Kazaka are keeping a very close look on this. And um, it, it's up to the town to address it, um, explain why, it, you know, how, how they're going to go about uh, handling this. Because we, we, and the tough thing was we, um, there was no way that we would have seen that in our budget when we approved it or when the town approved ours. This right. all happened mm -hmm. afterwards. So, um, Which goes back to the timing of why we should adopt our budget after the state. It, yeah, it would be right. great. But the state didn't adopt their budget until very late. Right. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Right. So anyway, yeah. Okay. So okay. let's, uh, I think it would be just good to kind of discuss as we start to near that and yeah, we'll recognize how we we'll may or may not yeah. want to use those funds. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else for comments? Okay. Well, I have a, a closing comment in that um, last week, Elaine and I had the opportunity to go to the professional development for the kindergarten teachers um, as they were doing discovery learning or purposeful play. Um, and you know that any great structure or any great business has to have a very strong foundation. Well, we spend some time with our kindergarten teachers and hopefully someday our pre-K teachers. <laughs> and um, you'll see that Wethersfield Public School has a great foundation. Um, but let me just explain why we're so excited. Discovery Learning is now part of our kindergarten program. Um, children are involved in centers and activities that stimulate problem solving. Um, and conversation. Um, the teachers not only create these centers and activities, but the teachers there to facilitate even more learning with rich conversation in each discovery. I'm so excited at this focus is because now we really are following the science of child development and we're doing it with our youngest learners. Our students will be still be assessed, you know, but the lessons and the activities are focused on where these kids are in their cognitive development. Wethersfield Public Schools will continue to be sec successful in kindergarten, grade one and two, and perhaps, as I said, in our pre-K someday, um, using this discovery approach for learning. So I couldn't tell you how excited both Elaine and I were as we were participating with the kindergarten teachers. It was great. Okay, any others? All right, Jack, any comments with life at the high school? Um, I know the speaker that we recently had was brought up um, looking for student feedback, and I'm sure that you'll find many students very, um, very much enjoyed that speaker. Um, his message was very powerful and um, straightforward, and he had student interaction. I think that was really good, um, and it was a, it was a very, a very enjoyable assembly. Um, also, the um, the pool that it's, I attended the swim meet last Friday and 
it's great to see that the pool's back. And I know that many people were disappointed that um, we weren't able to use it, but I'm happy that the swim, at least the girls swim team was able to use it for, um, for their season. Um, yeah, that's about it. Thanks, Jack. Any questions for Jack? Okay, thank you. Um, before I have a motion to adjourn this meeting, a reminder that we do not have a Board of Ed meeting on Tuesday, November 8th, because it's election day, and I do hope everyone gets out to vote. So may I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you, and good night. Try. Here we go. Here we try.